Um, welcome, welcome to quarantine number 88, uh, which means I've been doing this more weeks than the World Science Fiction Fantasy Association has been throwing their annual convention because this last week was the 79th annual convention for the World Science Fiction and Fantasy Association. And it was held here in DC and we voted to bring it here in DC four years ago. So gosh darn it, we were going. Uh, this is not the normal time for Worldcon. Um, plague happened and things got moved. And so uh, Worldcon had to be shoved into December, uh, the week before the week before Christmas. Uh, it's kind of insane. It is a true testament to the convention committee, the convention staff, um, all of those that have helped on the convention at any point uh, to make that happen and to have it go off as well as it did this weekend. Um, it was held in DC at the Omni Shore Home and uh, it proved to be a challenging venue, but I think ultimately a good one. Um, and uh, so we are going to do a few things that are kind of related to that and a couple things that aren't. Um, first of all, David. David. He's having eggnog with spiced rum. Eggnog with spiced rum. Truly a good choice for this time of year. It's unseasonably warm in DC, so eggnog seems... Eggnog and coquito I might do at some point again, but not until it gets colder, because, man, it just uh, doesn't seem like the right thing to do at this point. Uh, let's see, what else? Um, oh, across the street, essentially across the street from the Omni Shore, basically a block and a half away, there is a liquor store called uh, Sherry's. Maggie's? Sherry's? Uh, if my phone is around, I have their card for it in my phone. Um, so we'll get that for you. And we were told really good things about this particular liquor store. And we're like, well, it's not our usual haunt in DC, but we'll go and check it out. Sherry's. Sherry's. So they have a very eclectic mix of things, very diverse I'll set of link. um set of stuff at their uh uh at their liquor store and it was a lot of fun actually pawing through their shelves because i don't know if it was because we had all descended on them or they just received a shipment or what but things were a little kind of disorganized and so there was much pawing through and going wait what is that back there and moving bottles and finding things and one of the things that we found and therefore brought home is is this so this is a single still uh, Eldorado rum, which means it's being produced by Diamond Distilling mm -hmm. out of Guyana. And it is a single still, it is the Port Morant still. Why is that important? Why is that important? <laughs> Nobody bitch. knows why that's important. So the Port Morant still is, to the best of my knowledge, other rum experts may have better knowledge than I, uh, it is the only still functioning double wooden still in the world. It is the primary still from which the Pusser's English Navy recipe for ah, rum comes from. Okay. So what are we going to do for our toast this evening? We're going to do a rum tasting where we're going to do some Pusser's rum, Pusser's rum, some Pusser's 15, and then we're going to have the El Dorado Port Morant and see if we can pick out Similarities. To, to, to where those oh, notes are in the Port Morant. I could probably take my badge off now. But the now that the convention, convention is over and we're at home. and <laughs> yeah. So what else are we going to do this evening before, besides just drinking some rum? So um, You're going to make some drinks. I'm going to make some drinks. Uh, we. You're going to show us some new things. I, I am. Before we left, we bought a bag of tangerines. Yes. And... We need to use up those tangerines, so I juiced a bunch of those tangerines and then hunted around for a recipe that uses tangerine juice. And there is, uh, it's not a classic tiki drink, it's, it is a, it is a drink that was found in the notebook of one of the big godfathers of tiki. Okay. Do we know that it ever got served? No. Do we know that they ever put it together and decided it should be on a menu? No. no. But we're Are gonna we going to make it? Yes. yes. Okay, so here's the Port Marat. Put that down there. Um, 
So the Port Moran is coming in at 40%. The uh, British Navy Pussers is also, no, this is 42%. And the 15 year, I think, is 40%. Right? So they're all really pretty, pretty close. Uh, there are other things in these guys besides the Port Morant. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see if we can pull the Port Morant, if we can tell the Port Morant notes from it. This is your standard Hussars. That can go elsewhere. We don't need that anymore. Uh, I thought you would like do the this is this. No, we could do that. Is this. We could. We could do that. So, so I mentioned we were going live or Dead Dog Tired. Uh, dead Dog is a Spanish phrase for the Dead Dog Party uh, after closing ceremonies. Right. So, so, so once was, the... We're going to make a couple Spanish references. We will try and explain them. Uh, we've been kind of immersed in science fiction fandom for the weekend. So... All right, there we go. And Worldcon is very much a convention for science fiction fandom. Um, it is where true, true um, aficionados of fandom, fans yes. of fandom, fans go. of fandom go. Right. Um, it's where the World Science Fiction Fantasy Society annual meetings are and the big board meetings, which start at ten o'clock every morning. Yeah, and we wow, don't go, go but those. there are people that go to everyone. Yep. Um, the Hugos, the, the Hugo Hugos. Awards. Right. So the Hugos um, are one of one of, if not the most prestigious award in science speculative fiction uh, writing, um, and they do other they do it for art and a few other things yeah. as well. Um, and that award ceremony, voting for that is at the uh, it's part of your membership. It's part of your membership, right. and uh, the award ceremony is actually was actually right. Saturday night. Right. And then site selection for future. Right. Um, congratulations to, to China. Ch Chengdu. China Chengdu, who will be hosting the twenty twenty three. Twenty three. Yeah. Is it three years out. Two years out. Because next year is uh, next year Chicago. Chicago. And then I think it's Chengdu. Is it okay? Yeah. Right. I think it's only two years out now. They shortened it. it used to be three years out okay. for the voting. Okay. Also, it used to be a rotation schedule, and now it's a distance. And right. Yada, yada, yada. You don't okay. Care. You Drinking. Don't, you, you don't care. Drinking. It was in D.C. We went. We went. We voted. Uh, we voted for it to be here. We, yeah, as we supported it, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So yeah, we had to go. Yeah. Um, <sighs> incense. Yeah, it smells like pussers. <sighs> it's not crazy rum, but it's tasty. It's, um... Mm -hmm. That is pussers. <laughs> you need water? Is that what you're going for? Well, no, I was going to, you know, give us a... Clear our palate yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna reach over and grab the Pusters 15. So this is essentially a very similar recipe to this aged uh, 15 15 years in Royal Navy Admiralty approved blend of Pusters aged 15 years is heavily influenced by rum from the double wooden pot stills of Port Marat Guyana. Yeah, da 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 da, right there. Hmm. So there should be a noticeable difference between that and this. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what some of that difference is? There's a woodiness to it. Hey, the aging helps. <laughs> There's a... There's a center high note. I don't know what these things mean. And I hmm. there are words. I'm sure they have meaning, but... It's kind of like in the center of my taste palette. Um, I don't know if that's... There's some... The finish is longer on this. Mm -hmm. And there's some like vanilla and toffee notes in that mm -hmm. finish that are absent here. Mm -hmm. There is... Um, like right after that initial hit, mm -hmm. which is very similar between these two, 
um, there's a, a a bright note. That's all I can really describe it. It's just it's a flash. It's like you said, it's the top of the the roof of your mouth. Yeah. It's like bing. There's this this thing, this element here, and and then as it's fairy I, dust. Yes, and then as it fades from your mouth, you're left with a little bit more dryness to the mouth, which mm -hmm. is the tannins from the... It's got to be okay. the tannins from the okay. oak. There's a bit of orange rind. There should be, yeah. Mm -hmm. The nose on this is more distinctive, but that could also be the... What is it? Extra 2%? You have the extra 2%. Maybe you get... Some Christmas decorations up. Yeah, no, we yeah. <laughs> Not Woohoo! But, hey, Christmas yeah, no, decorations, some. right? We got home. I took a nap. So then I woke up and Pooch went, "There's no citrus," and I went, "Oh, you're right." So. And our studio story. audience is going, "Well, why didn't he go get citrus?" Because he was ordering. Food. He doesn't drive. He does have his license, and there I are times... You, I drive you crazy. Yes. That's, that's better. And when and I am unable to drive, he does drive. And and because she loves me, she went out to Surfside Sips, and she found a little Christmas ornament. So this is a blown glass puffer fish. This is a purplish-pink puffer fish. And you can put a, a hook mm -hmm. here, and then it lights up like so. Like you can't actually see that. You just see a glowing light. Woo! Yeah, I'll take it closer to the camera. Weird, weird. Oh, can you see it through the through the smoke? On <laughs> there we go. All right, now we're gonna stick our nose in the Port Marat. Eyes, the puffer fish. Here he is, not glowing. That's weird. I thought it was very cute, so I had to get it. Is, it. it is very cute. Oh, well, you could, uh, wait, we could do the, uh, we could do the thing. We could do the thing? We have, oh. we have white tissue that we can put behind it. Here, let me put that up there. Oh, I see. Yeah, put that up there and see if that works. Technical stuff. White tissue. There you go. And if you turn him off, I think people can, can see the little puffery eye. There we go. There he is. Yay. This is very cute. Uh, the guy from Surfside Sips was doing a live, <laughs> and I saw him working on one. I'm like, I must have one. So I, I have one now. It is absolutely clear that these are blends. I'm going to have then, some of this in yes. it. Yes. Yes, and this has more of it. I yes, think. yes, it does. Oh, fig! I get right there at the end. There's this blast that is fig, almost a dried fig. So it doesn't have that high note. Nope. It's, so that is from something else. Oh, yeah, I see right. the fig, and it is. I so, not, so the other is, one uh, there was a taste in the center of my mouth. This one's more. 12 years. 12 More years. towards the edges. Mm -hmm. It's uh, very round. This was uh, this is a cute find because there was like an Eldorado 8 and an Eldorado 12 sitting in front of it. Mm -hmm. I was like, what is that short squat bottle that is covered in dust? <laughs> I was like, poof, dusty. Uh, yeah, it was bottled in 2006. No, it was distilled in 2006, which means it was bottled in 2018, which means it's probably been sitting on their shelves for three years. Yeah. That is really that is really neat. I like that. That's. Um, yeah, that was a nice find. Uh, we have a hello star Fujinimo from Greg. Hey, Greg. Brooke says, "Great idea, David, for the eggnog with spice rum." Uh, Brooke, we also got you something. Yes, we did. We get to restock you on your one of your favorite rums, which is the Baku Five Year. Actually, I think it's one of her wife's. Well, it is. It is one of her wife's favorite rums, and therefore it is one of Brooke's favorite rums, keeping the wife happy, as it were. Uh, so, 
Um, we didn't actually toast, but uh, I, I think the, the toast here um, is to tradition, Port Morant tradition, and the tradition of world continent, keeping that tradition alive and going, um, and Spanish history and all of that is there. Now, I could just start with the cocktail. We have big hearts from Brooke. Uh, I can start with the cocktail that uses the tangerine juice. Um, and that's oh, and we got Baku from the Wind from Andrew Baku for the win. Um, and I think that's what I'm going to start. I, I'm going to start with the, the next drink after that one is one that requires me to kind of, well, I'm going to put it together impromptu. So, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something in Star's hands that she will hopefully drink while I'm playing around with trying to figure out what this other cocktail should be. So, um, we have mentioned Joe, uh, S C I A L O M. Shalom, Shalom, uh, on this podcast before, and he is ow, He is one of those uh, great, great tiki bartenders from yesteryear, whose name is sprawled all over many, 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 many different cocktails. The M1 cocktail was found in one of his old notebooks, and uh, I don't know that. It, like I said, I don't know that it's ever been served, but we're going to try it. So what do we do with this? So this is this is we're this is weird. This is this is not what this is not what you would consider sort of normal tiki esque drink. So first of all, there's not a lot of acidic component to this. It's two ounces of tangerine juice, and I have to figure out where my tangerine juice is. This is my tangerine juice. Yep, that's the tangerine juice. So we have two ounces of that. Do, 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 do. Very dark, very orangey, very orange in color. Very light flavor, even more so than orange juice and much less acidic. So I'm a little worried about this cocktail and the lack of acidity here. We'll see. Three quarters of an ounce of Cointreau, Triple Sec, Curacao, something along those lines. And so we're gonna go with three quarters of an ounce of uh, Pierre Ferrand's Dry Curacao. How is, uh, how is volume and visuals? Are we too dark, are we too light? How the, the volume, all good? Maybe, yes, no, we'll find out. A dash of Angostura bitters. Sure. Angostura. There we go. One dash Angostura bitters. We are missing the liquor. So of course I'm going to reach for rum, except that I'm not, because this drink isn't made with rum. This drink is made with scotch. Single malt scotch, to be exact. To be even more exact, a Highland single malt scotch is what is specified in the recipe. Do we have Highland single malt scotches? All good on light and uh, Yes, we do. But last year for Christmas, I think it was, yeah, last year for Christmas, I made a pilgrimage to Total Wine and came back with some tasting bottles of various things from Total Wine. And one of those was, I think this is only for Total Wine, the Grangestone uh, line of whiskeys and scotches. That's got shoved in your stocking last uh -huh. year. Uh, so this is the Grainstone Highland Single Malt Scotch Whiskey, uh, bourbon cask finish, double matured, 40% alcohol. So since this has been lying around and not used up to this point, we're gonna use it for this cocktail, unless my wife has some real strong objection to it, but no. I kind of doubt that. All right, uh, an ounce and a quarter. So we're gonna go three quarters of an ounce. And then we're going to go a half ounce. Right there. And that's it. So the Angostura, the Curacao, the Scotch, and the Tangerine juice are all that goes in there. With some ice, we're going to shake it in, in a moment or two. Uh, I do want to do a quick tasting, though, of 
the scotch, and I'm fairly certain that the wife will want to do this as well. So we're going to do pour a little bit of the scotch in here. I'm going to pour a little bit of the scotch in here. Oh, look. Just enough to kill that. So if we want more, we're going to have to go to the uh, total wine in uh, Maryland. Because the total wines in Virginia can't sell hard alcohol. I know. It's weird. Weird, weird, weird. All right. So the Grainstone Highland Single Malt Scotch. Hmm. All right, I'm going to move. You're going to move the incense? I'm going to finally move the incense because while I like the visual effect, it is blowing right back into my nose, and that's making it really hard for me to have. It's still coming right at me. It loves you. It loves me. There, go away. Um... There's not a lot of nose on that. No, but what I'm getting is kind of acetone -y. I'm not getting a lot of scotch nose on this. I'm getting a lot of, I'm not getting a lot of anything, but I'm getting a, eh, it's alcohol. Maybe a little scotchy, but, but you know, it reminds me of those really bad hard scotch candies. It tastes better than it Does smells. It? Okay. Yes. Here's to mixing scotches. <laughs> Cause that yeah. That's a mix scotch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, so we're gonna see if mixing this with tangerine juice and orange curacao leads to something yummy. Leads to something yummy. That is all right, now, by all accounts, Star and I tend to appreciate more aggressively flavored scotches. I'm not as huge a fan of the Eile iodine, iodine smoke and peat as she is. Uh, I tend to like some of the other scotches from other portions of the country. But I, we still prefer our scotches to be a little more aggressive than, I think, this particular scotch. So... I have no problem putting this in a cocktail. It's working out just fine. All right, we're going to shake this. And then we're going to strain this into a double rocks glass that is filled with ice. So we're going to, uh, we're going to violate... We're going to mix alcohols here because we're going to use an Appleton glass. This is an Appleton rum double rocks glass. Fill that with some ice. So, that goes here. I'm going to reach over and because we are talking uh, Worldcon, um, I'm going to go ahead and use a pick here. And what do I want to put on that pick? I have my cocktail cherries around here somewhere. I don't know. Oh, we have Cam. Yay, we have Cam. Uh, cocktail cherries somewhere around. Wow, why can I not find my cocktail cherries when I need them? Need, need, okay. All right, so we're gonna, just, we're gonna go with these. <laughs> we're gonna go with the homemade ones instead. How's that? Uh, I should probably pour this so that it doesn't dilute any further. It does say strain. Hey, yep, strain into a double rocks. It is a pretty orange color. There we go. And then we're gonna stick uh, this down in here and find, no we're not, we're going to actually use tweezers to do this. Don't be silly, pooch, pooch. Just gonna go got big, great big cherries here that have been soaking in brandy and rum for well nigh forever. And the cocktail pick you probably cannot see from there, but it is in fact Darth Vader. So uh, I think that's gonna be appropriate. We're just gonna set that right in there. 
The garnish for this is actually listed as like a piece of pineapple and a sprig of... I can't tell. I didn't know what that word was. Borage. Yeah. I don't know what borage is. B-O-R-A-G-E or something like that. I, I That is not something that I know. But there, there is the M1 uh, with a Darth Vader pick. And so we're going to take a taste of this and find out what we think. Spring of Warage. Um. Wow. I I I wouldn't um. I wouldn't throw it out. <laughs> It, it's kind of uninteresting. It, it really is. Uh, the the tangerine juice is there, but it doesn't provide a, a bright spot. It, it's just not acidic enough for that. And I got to tell you, that Highland Scotch just isn't bringing a whole lot to the party either in terms of flavor. So I'm afraid here that uh, if we want to do something with this cocktail, A... We add a little bit more of that Highland Scotch, which I just did. Um, I'm going to stick that here. I'm going to pour this back in here. Um, bright. I wanted to brighten that up. The thing to brighten it up with would be, oh, I don't know. How about some lime juice? Yeah, that'll work. So let's go. Uh, David says, we have new marine-themed picks on Molly's bar. Yay! I wonder where they came from. Uh, Cam says, only because I didn't keep them. So I just added a uh, quarter ounce of lime juice here. Um, and, I, you know, I'm that one dash of Angostura is just not enough. We're going to go with a second. There we go. We're risking over dilution here. And because we're risking over dilution, I am not I am not gonna put ice back in that glass. I am just going to strain it. Do it that way. Get a little shake. Huh. Now I can smell that. That seems interesting. There you go. That's actually better. So it needed more. Uh, it needed a little more of the scotch and it needed a little more flavor component to it. So the lime actually brightened it up quite a bit. Mm. Just a quarter ounce. Oh, you can definitely taste the tangerine in that. Yeah. Yep. Which you kind of couldn't. It was kind of vaguely yeah. orange-ish ahead of time. So there you go. There. Take your scotch drink and be gone from my rum bar. <coughs> Not at all true. I'm a scotch I'm fan as well. The, uh, the pick. The pick. She's going to show off the pick. Uh, in case you missed that, uh, David and Chris have a boat called Molly. And Molly has uh, is now um, taking possession of some... Uh, uh, straws and picks, or are they just picks? Just picks, just picks that picks are from Dizzy Diva. right that are nautically themed, um, and so not Surfside Sips. I'm sorry, Dizzy Diva picks, yes. which is where the Darth Vader pick yes. is from. Uh, we quite like Dizzy Diva. She does really cute things, including the um, the Lego headed ones, right? So we have these little Lego heads, which is kind of awesome because the the caps, like the hats and that sort of thing, come off of these picks, which means I can use various hats and caps and hair and that sort of thing from my advent calendars on these picks and play around with those because I have a Lego advent. I have many Lego advent calendars from multiple years past. So I could train, change these out to be like uh, Stormtrooper picks if I wanted to, which is kind of a, a nifty thing. Um, all right, I'm just drinking well, rum. We did here. do a toast because we congratulated Chengdu. We did congratulate Chengdu, and we did like give hearty thanks to all of the folks that contributed to make Discon Three actually happen. Um, 
so all right uh drink number two now that we've done the the m1 and now we know why that shout out to the folks we actually saw World did we see people at Worldcon? Yes. We did. We did. We saw um, Marnie and Gooch while they were running around with Sean and McGuire, which, uh, you know, I, poor Sean. And Sean, Sean is kind of, she has one, but there's a certain Susan Lucci element going on with the number of nominations that she's uh, gotten that have not panned out for Hugo Awards. And I was really, really pushing for Sean's October Day series to win best Hugo best series mm -hmm. and it went to Martha Wells uh, Murderbot series which uh, I don't know anything about other but than a lot of my friends about. have said you've got to read this so at some point I'll read the Murderbot series but first I have to get through the latest book in the October Day series once I find it um, all right uh, who else did we see that was Marnie Gooch Shannon so we saw Susie and, and Bert uh, from California. We went to school with uh, Susie. Uh, our friends came down from Silver Spring um, that also went to school with Susie and Star and I. And uh, that would be Tim and Kirsten and their daughter Emily. We saw um, Ursula and um, Kevin, Kevin um, who Kevin actually interviewed Star a ways back for Productivity Alchemy podcast. Yeah. And we met Ursula at a book signing, if I remember right, here in the district. Um, Dave McCarty, uh, Ruth Lichtwart from Kansas, uh, Diane Lacey from Winnipeg, um, Ben Yellow, now from Texas, Jerry Sullivan. Jerry Sullivan. Uh, all these people that you don't know, but we met them again, got to spend some time with them at Worldcon. And that's really truly for us what Worldcon is anymore is seeing the friends that will only come together for world cons because we're all scattered all over the place all over the country and, and, the world. and jeff. Uh, oh right uh jeff and tanya uh -huh. right oh and we all made a pilgrimage over to a bunch of us made a pilgrimage over to archipelago, archipelago and Sierra. archipelago is uh, like they do a couple of have been doing for several years they're doing the sip and santa special so they do up the entire bar in Christmas theme, Christmas tiki theme, and they do a series of drinks that are off their own menu and the Sip and Santa menu that is going around at a variety of different tiki bars um, around the country. And of course, we we had to walk away with uh, swag from them because, well, you do. And we got a particular glass from uh, the Sip and Santa but then when we went to buy that glass, we realized that Archipelago uh, was back to having their tall snifter glasses. Um, so here is the Archipelago in D.C. tall snifter glass, which needs paper in it. Right. There it is. Got it. Okay. And it has the creature from the Black Lagoon on the side of it. Dun, dun, dun. Very cool. Very cool looking really nice shape and size for doing cocktails um, all those cocktails where i use the larger brandy snifters for yeah that's that's what this is going to be used for once it gets washed over here but that's not the cool sip and santa uh mug the cool sip and santa mug is uh is still here in the box so uh, one of the things i was thinking about doing was trying to do a couple of drinks off the sip and santa menu except that they don't give you proportions, so I would have had to try and figure out what some of those proportions were. And the drink I was going to do actually requires um, an allspice syrup, and I do not have an allspice syrup. I would have just substituted my spice syrup, but I'm out of spice syrup, so I can't do that. Uh, so as a consequence, we're not doing any of the Sip and Santa cocktails this evening. Maybe, maybe later. Maybe it's some other time. So here... Here is our new Sip and Santa mug. So it's got this really cute Santa up front. Yep, see? Doesn't that look like Santa? Right? Santa? Yeah. Uh, but wait, what What the heck is... Dude, it's a Mer Santa mug. Yeah, totally awesome. Mer Santa mug from uh, Archipelago and Sip and Santa. So that's the latest addition to the Christmas mugs is that mug, which again needs to be washed before we can use it. 
Very, very cute. Uh, we love it. All right. So what else happened? Um, all right, I'm going to try to do in front of you uh, a brand new drink that I've never tried before. Um, I, I don't have... There, there are spots in North Carolina, if that's at all close to where Cam can... Oh, Sip and Santa spots yeah. in North Carolina. If you look up um, Sip and... Put a link. If there's, the a link, there's a link to Sip and Santa, which should have the link to the locations to find a location nearest you where you can go and you can have the same drinks that we were having the other night at Archipelago. Uh, the Christmas Eve of Destruction was particularly yummy. Um, the Greek Gifter uh, and a few others um, were, were particularly yummy uh, that we had there. Introduced Jeff to his very first tiki bar. He'd never been to one. I, I didn't know that that was a thing. I would have drug him off to a tiki bar uh, much earlier Sadly, Jeff is not able to avail himself of Tiki Cat in Kansas City because they've now closed, which is just awful and, and sad that he lives in a town with what was the number one Tiki bar in the country for many, many years and never made it there. So we'll have just have to keep him appraised of when uh, Tiki Cat opens, whether it's under Tiki Cat or some other guys, uh, again, in some other location. So, all right, um, second drink of the evening. We're going to go a little far afield here. So, a friend of ours, friend, acquaintance, borderline on there, yeah, uh, won a couple of awards at the Hugo Award Ceremony. She did. She won. She remembers us from online, so I would say casual friend. Casual friend. Uh, certainly, we would have them over to the house for drinks, cocktails, that sort of thing, anytime they wanted to. She... Um, she won a Hugo Award for Best Short Story, and her acceptance speech for that Hugo... It was actually for the, the other award that she started, though. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay, so flip this around. Um, about halfway through the Hugo Awards, they do a couple of other awards that aren't technically Hugos, but are administered by the Hugo Awards. Um, and one of those is the Lodestar Award, which is given given to the best uh, young, adult. young adult novel book young adult book uh, of the last year and uh, Kingfisher won for won the lodestar this year and proceeded to regale us with four or five minutes worth of interesting facts about slime molds that was the acceptance speech was talking about slime molds uh, okay a few minutes later kingfisher wins for best short story and comes up and says well we got a problem here because i only prepared the one acceptance speech so she just rattled off a couple of more interesting facts about slime molds and it seemed to be the highlight of the acceptance speeches all night long uh, it was learning about slime molds because the folks at Worldcon are weird, geeky people. So what I'm going to try and do is something that I want to call the slime mold. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use some ingredients that I have not used previously, or an ingredient that I have not used previously, but I keep telling you that I'm going to use. So our local international market has started carrying these things. This is fruit of all basil seed drink and this one has pomegranate flavor in it it's kind of red and you can see the pomegranate seeds in there at least kind of maybe if i hold this up can you see the pomegranate seeds in there yeah, maybe maybe but this is this is pretty viscous stuff um it, it drinks easily enough but there's yeah it's um it's a little thicker than than you might normally think you want to drink and so I'm going to use this as my base for the slime mold because that seems appropriate to me. Now, there is some sugar in here, so I have to be a little bit, a uh, little careful about what I'm doing with the sugar content. But it does need to uh, be tarted up just a tad. Uh, let me open this bottle. There we go. Oh, maybe I can do this. Do, do, do. Will this work? Here's that light. How about there? 
You see that? Yeah, I think you can. You can see some of the little seeds floating in there. I do not know what gives it its viscosity, but uh, something. <laughs> something gives it its viscosity. I did at one point just throw some rum and ice cubes in with one of these. Needed a little more. Needed a little more something. Uh, I'm not sure really what that was, but it just needed something. I'm not going for a really powerful, uh, overwhelmingly alcoholic uh, drink here. So I think I'm going to go with a white rum. I don't want to use a dark rum for this because it's going to kind of obliterate the weird color that I'm going for. And um, I'm not going to add any sweetness to this. Uh, because I know how sweet that is. So I'm going to go an ounce and a half of the Hidden Harbor White Rum. Uh, why? Because it's got a whole bunch of rums in it, and I'm really not sure what flavor profile is going to go best with this pomegranate flavor. So I'm just guessing here. We are going to go an ounce and a half of the Hidden Harbor. It's 40%? No, it's 50%. Okay, so yeah, we got the we got the alcohol covered here with an ounce and a half. We don't need to go two ounces. Now, I do want to tart this up, I said, a little bit. Ooh, tart it up! So, I'm going to add a little grapefruit juice to this because, well, we're still swimming in grapefruit. Thank you, um, David and Chris. I'm going to take a sip of this. I've tried several other flavors, including the passion fruit, which is quite yummy. Uh, but I have not had the pomegranate yet, so we're going to try the pomegranate. What is the name of the slimy bottled drink? The slimy bottled drink's brand name is Fruitival. F-R-U-I-T-I-V-A-L. And it is a basil seed drink with pomegranate flavor. It's actually quite tasty. I think that might actually go really well with that rum. Um, so the question is, how much of this? I'm just going to guess here and go two ounces. Sure, why not? Um, it does have to be a little thicker in order to keep the basil seeds in suspension. And if you're going to add ice to this, it's going to thicken it up and tighten it. So I have to be really careful about what I do uh, with this. Um, right, right. Uh, Lime juice. No, grapefruit juice. Grapefruit juice. That's what I want to do. Grapefruit juice. Now, as we've discussed previously, the grapefruit juice has a higher acidity, but isn't the, the white grapefruits aren't as tart as you might expect from having that higher acidity. So I'm going to go a full half ounce of the grapefruit juice. And this may also break up the viscosity of the basil seed drink. I don't know. Chemistry. Playing with chemistry here. I'm going to add a little bit of cube dots. Um, so four, five, six ice cubes here. Not even a full thing of ice. And then we're going to lid this up and shake it some. All right? I've got the rum. I've got the grapefruit juice. I've got the pomegranate seed drink in here. That's, that's all I'm working on. I don't have any real spice in here, but I could add that later. I need the baseline of the cocktail here. Yeah. Oof. How are we doing? All right. Now I could just pour this into a drink, uh, into a cocktail mug and then see what it's doing. Or I can just stick a spoon in here, see how we are. No. So that needs more of our basil seed drink. Uh, and I think the ice is causing it to dilute. So now we get to be, now we get to be fun with this. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to strain it into a glass and then I'm going to pour some more basil seed drink into it until I'm happy with the flavor. How's that sound? You all okay with that? Yeah. You're like, I don't know. What are you doing, you weird man? Uh, let's see. We need one of these. Strainer. Oh, 
Might need a bigger glass. We lose almost all of the basil seeds. Um, I'm going to hope that just filling this up is going to do it here. I'm going to shake this just a tad. And is that the passion? Which flavor is that? This is the pomegranate flavor. Let's see. Clump, 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 clump. Slime molds come in many different colors, so this is perfectly fine. Uh, they are often found in wood piles and um, uh, mulch and that sort of thing, so I think the, actually the little flecks of basil seed in here are, are not such a bad idea. Uh, here's my spoon. I'm going to just spin this around just a little bit and do a little bit of mixing here. Be very gentle with this. I don't want to disrupt the viscosity too much. There we go. Okay, so um, this is my attempt at something called the slime mold. Okay, I don't think that's half bad anymore. Uh, it was not where I wanted it earlier, but it needed just needed more of the basil seed drink. So, um, now you could go in many different ways with this. I chose to just use this drink itself for its viscosity, for its little gelatinous uh, consistency. You could easily use something like xanthan gum or uh, another starch in order to make something thick and gloppy, but that would be more disgusting. And that's not what we're going for for this because this is very much a, uh, a, a very complimentary of slime mold. So I didn't, yes. I didn't want to do a disgusting drink uh, based on the slime mold. And see, we could play around with different flavors, like pomegranate, passion fruit, that sort of thing. She doesn't like these. I don't straight... like the basil seed drink, but that's kind of yummy. That's kind of yummy. See? Yeah. All right. Yeah. It would take some playing around. Yeah. Uh, we could do other things to this. Um, you know, you could reach over and grab some bitters, for instance, and do some dots of bitters in here. Oh, yeah, that's weird. So it's breaking Eat up. your fizz stick. It's a... Uh, doing weird things to it's breaking up the surface tension on top oh, of it. Oh, I think he's stopping needs your uh Oh, my lele stick is what he's yeah. thinking that I need. Brooke says that flax seed has slime as well. There we go. Yeah, so if you look, if I get this close enough to you, you can see that the seeds are actually suspended in this. So this is not just a um like alcohol water mix. There's something there's there's some Gelatin of some sort in this. That was maybe a little too much on the bitters. I was using the uh, cherry bitters. That was the right call for the bitters. It accentuates the pomegranate and the fruit elements of it. Now it's maybe just a little too cherry forward. Um, but yeah, that that'll work. That's 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 nothing to be ashamed of there. Um, I am going to have some more straight up rum though. I do find that the basil fruit drinks are fairly mild in flavor, and as a consequence, it would be very, very easy to overpower them with rum. And in fact, you saw I just about doubled the amount of um, basil drink that I put in this uh, from the or original go because I was tasting just rum. And so now I needed to kick up that pomegranate. So that works. There you go. There's, there's my homage to Kingfisher and her acceptance speech speeches based on the slime mold. Here you go. Slime mold to you, Kingfisher. Excellent job. All right. So we've done a rum tasting. Uh, we've done the M1 with tangerine juice. We've done the slime mold um, or made something like this uh, that could be considered a slime mold. Um, next up... We'll do the drink that I was slinging around in the hotel room. So it's not at all uncommon to, of course, invite friends uh, back to your hotel room to have a, a nightcap, a couple of cocktails, something along those lines. Shoot the breeze, discuss, you know, what just happened at the convention, that sort of thing. Uh, there was a lot more of that, I think, going on at this convention because 
there was, I wouldn't say there was limited communal space, but the communal spaces, I mean, it's COVID, right? It's still, there's still plague going around. Yeah. And so. We did not go to room parties. Yeah, we, we barely at all went to room parties. We went to one that was sort of invitation only. Um, I think we stopped in at one other Wednesday night. Um, and, but we did not stay particularly long, and when population hit a point, which was not very much, that uh, we felt uncomfortable, we just decided to, to go off. Um, and as a consequence, we did a little more entertaining in the hotel room. So I had to prepare to be able to do entertaining in the hotel room, and what I prepared what to bring was a rum for tasting, which was um, one of the, it was the Sagacity rum from Foursquare. Um, and uh, truly tasty rum introduced a couple of people that are uh, bourbon and whiskey lovers to really high end rum, not really high end, but higher end rum. And uh, Diane, you were you were very complimentary of this, so you know have to have you over and, and walk you through some of the uh, the rums that we have here. But what I was making was were my ties because I could, and uh, because we had things like the small hands, not small hands. I'm sorry, the uh, liquid alchemist orjat and I wanted to it was just a convenient travel size I wanted to use some of this up and find out what it was like and, and how well it worked and uh, so I made sure I had all the ingredients for a Mai Tai and then I could riff off of that but let's just say inspiration did not strike and as a consequence we didn't really do much riffing off of the Mai Tai it was just pretty much a straight Mai Tai the other cheat that I did is uh, I use denizen rum. So the denizen 8, the Merchant's Reserve here, is uh, actually blended uh, a French, right? Martinique, yeah, right, a French Martin, so i.e. Martinique rum, i.e. a French rum, but unlike most of your Martinique rums, the rum that goes into this blend is coming from molasses and not from cane juice, and it's mixed with a Jamaican rum, and you'll recall from several episodes back, I did a cocktail where I used a Jamaican, I used a Mai Tai, but I used Jamaican rum and a Guadalupe rum, which is also a French territory, but molasses based rum. And it was phenomenally good Mai Tai. This by and large uh, on the Tiki boards, it seems to be if you have to go with a single bottle for your Mai Tais, the Denizen Merchant's Reserve is, is the one most people will go. That's, that's what you should be using for your Mai Tais if you have to do a single bottle. And so in the essence of saving some time and not carrying around too many bottles, that's what we brought was the uh, Denizen Merchant's Reserve. And then we picked up a second bottle while we were at Sherry's because they had it and it can sometimes be a little hard to find. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a Mai Tai this evening, but I'm going to make a riff off the Mai Tai because I wanted to do this riff but I was only going to do it if I could do like a round of Mai Tais first and then do kind of a, a, a change up one of the components. And I didn't get a Mai Tai. And Star did not get a Mai Tai. I had gin and tonics. Um, part of the issue was that uh, we, we were running a little low on limes and they were kind of a pain uh, to get your hands on at the hotel. So you know, we were limited in that regard. Anyway, I'm going to have another sip of this. I have way too much rum sitting in front of me to drink. Mm. Okay, there's that. Do you want some of more of the slime mold, or are you good? I'm good. She's good with the slime mold. How are you doing on your uh, M1? There's a little left. There's a little left on the M1. Okay, so she's you know, she's not hammering them back. That's good. Oh my gosh, we are at 8.25, so I got like five minutes to do this Mai Tai thing. All right, um, sure, fine. Let's do that. Uh, Mai Tai is also a shaken drink, but it is a shaken drink with crushed ice. It goes in a Mai Tai glass. So I'm going to reach down in here and we're going to pull uh, the Hidden Harbor Mai Tai glass right there. Okay. Uh, normally this is a quarter ounce of Orgeat and a quarter ounce of simple syrup. Sure. Okay. We can do that except that I like mine to have a little more Orgeat flavor to them. So I'm going to go a full half ounce of Orgeat, 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 however you wish to pronounce it. So I'm going to go half ounce. Half ounce, right? There we go. And then for the quarter ounce of simple, I don't actually have any plain simple syrup. What I do have is some Demerara syrup. 
So I'm going to go quarter ounce of the Demerara syrup. This is just a rich syrup, but it is made with Demerara sugar instead of making it with white sugar. So that's a two to one mixture of sugar to water. Right, there you go. So there's our sweet component. Now, the typical Mai Tai is going to have a half ounce of orange curacao in it. And what we're going to do is split that. We're going to go a half ounce of orange curacao. Excuse me, a quarter ounce of orange curacao. So I let Ursula know that you were making a slime mold drink, and she liked it. She gave it a heart. So there's, there's a quarter ounce of the orange curacao. We need another quarter ounce of something that has some orange element to it, but I wanted to make this a little more interesting. So here is the Tempest Fugit Grand Classico, and we're gonna go a quarter ounce of that. So we're splitting what would normally be a half ounce of orange curacao between orange curacao and Grand Classico. That's what we're doing here. Kind of a bitter orange uh, flavor to this. And then we need uh, an ounce of lime juice. So we've got some lime over here somewhere. All right, there's lime juice. One full ounce of lime juice. All right, there's an ounce of lime juice. And then we have two ounces, dun, 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 of Denizen Merchants Reserve. Here we go. There we go. Two ounces from shaken with crushed ice. Fortunately, I prepared some crushed ice already, so you do not have to listen to the sound of my ice cream. So how did I make crushed ice at the hotel if I didn't have my ice crusher with me? Well, as it turns out, my travel cocktail kit I have right here. One of the things that I use for packing in that is a Lewis bag. <laughs> so here's a Lewis bag. This is from Ice Made Clear and it's a canvas bag which helps to wick the liquid away from the ice. So you throw ice chunks in there and well the other thing that comes in handy is a muddler. I have a solid wooden muddler here and just holding the ice up here and going whack, 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 uh, get you crushed ice um, uh, pretty efficiently, actually, which was kind of cool. So we had the crushed ice that we could use for making our Mai Tais. There we go. All right, we're shaking this. Shaky, shaky. There, it's Grand Classico Mai Tai. Right in there. And this can go here. Fill that up with a little bit more crushed ice. In fact, a lot of your tiki aficionados are like, oh, just mound up the crushed ice on it. You've got a bar mat. What do you care? Uh, I should have a pretty big sprig of mint in this. Yes. We don't have any mint. No. Uh, what we do have, however, is the other canonical garnish, which is, of course, the... Lime husk. Lime husk. And so the lime husk can go right in there. Drink and just slop over. Set that. We need a straw for that. Do we? Do we need yeah. a straw for yeah. this? Okay. Um, well, what do you think? What should we do for a straw? Do we have straws? I think we do. We do. I think we have straws from Surfside Sips. Surfside Sips? Oh, would we have any straws from Surfside Sips that are, oh, I don't know, science fiction and fantasy related? We do. We do. Like, oh, how about a lightsaber straw? Yeah, we got a lightsaber straw. So here's your controls for the lightsaber. Let's not drop the glass straw. Yeah, right. Okay. This is going to go in here. We're dorks. We are. We are totally dorks. I'm going to take a drink. Yeah, that doesn't suck. 
<laughs> Actually, that's really nice. The addition of the Grand Classico there. Oh, that's that's quite tasty, isn't it? Mmm. <laughs> I should let you have another sip before I disappear. Um, I really like that. Uh, oh, that's yeah, really that's yummy. that's that's a really yummy mai tai. It is. Uh, I I actually had a mai tai at um, Archipelago. Oh, you did. You I did. did. Yeah, wait, I didn't get a sip of that. You said it in front of me and I talked, so that doesn't work. <laughs> no, you said, oh, I had a Mai Tai at Archipelago. So, you know, I thought oh, that meant you don't need any. No, no. What it means is, guys, you'd make a nice mar martini. You make a nice Mai Tai at Archipelago. This is better. Mm. As I remind you from time to time. That's, that's actually pretty good. You don't have to look at the price point. Oh, right. Yeah, absolutely. I totally don't have to look at the price point for this. Um, there we go. Uh, so we have done uh, a tasting of the Port Morant from El Dorado and two rums that use rum from the Port Morant still in them. That's the Pussers and the Pussers 15. Very different rums. These two are quite much closer to each other than this is, but you can definitely tell the Port Marat notes, certainly in the 15 year, uh, not so much in the, the unaged or not or the lightly aged uh, Pusser's uh, standard. So we did the rum tasting. Then we did an M1, which uses scotch and tangerine juice. And I don't think I need to go out and purchase a whole bunch of Highland scotch and a bunch of tangerines and keep tangerine juice on hand in order to make that cocktail. Um, I may have to play around with some of the other cocktails that require orange juice and use tangerine juice instead of the orange juice and see how well that works. But I, I still think the tangerine juice just does not have the, enough of the acidity in it. It does not. So you got to add some lime or grapefruit juice to kick that up. So, Brooke, talking about your Lewis bag. Uh-huh. It's like primitive camping, manually crushing your cocktail ice. <laughs> yeah. It is sort of like rubber camping, or rudimentary camping, or I don't, I don't know. It's... Chris says, you know a drink is tasty when Star immediately walks away with it. There have been times where she has walked away with a drink, and I've been perfectly okay with her walking away with the drink, because, oh, excuse me, my dear wife does like her cocktails a little sweeter than I do, and occasionally it's like, yes, please, go take that drink away from me while I have something else. Um... I will say that I think the slime mold is probably the sweetest drink that we've had uh, this evening. Um, and it's an interesting cocktail. It's uh, it's it's just fun. Uh, I, I still think I might want to thicken this up with a little xanthan gum or something to get a little more slime moldy. But it does. It has that little bit of... It's maybe not the slime mold itself. It's the viscous slime trail behind the slime mold. That's more what this is, I think. Um, but it's still, it's kind of tasty. Uh, the pomegranate really comes through. It's very nice. Uh, so we did that, did the slime mold, uh, did a Mai Tai-esque thing where we split the orange curacao between orange curacao and uh, the Grand Classico from Tempest Fugit, which, you know, I've got the bottle here. I should probably show you that bottle. I think we showed this to you previously. So this is uh, a bitter liqueur, the Grand Classico. Hints of orange to that. Uh, it's probably more like, more akin to more a of an Amaro. Yeah, yeah, it's more of a Campari or Aperol. Uh, I think it would make a fantastic Aperol spritz where you swapped that out for the for the Aperol. It's not quite as bitter and harsh as Campari can be. Could also use that to make a Jungle Bird, and that would probably be pretty awesome as well. So maybe someday we'll do a, uh, a Grand Classico in, in Tiki drinks and see what we can do with that. Other than that, we are 8.35, that puts us uh, roughly an hour in, and a little over an hour in, so we should be saying our goodbyes. Um, next weekend, my gosh, is next weekend Christmas? Next weekend is Christmas. Next weekend is Christmas. So, so our next broadcast is day after Christmas. Next broadcast is going to be the day after Christmas, so uh, I hope you all have a wonderful, joyous Christmas. Um, Christmas can be a little hard. Um, especially the last couple of years, this year, last year, uh, plague, family not getting together, 
there are plenty of families that have lost family members. So, you know, take the cheer where you can. And if you're not very happy around this Christmas time, it's okay. Get professional help. If you think you need it, get professional help. Do not just force yourself to go through the, the holidays and, and go, oh, I'll be better once we get through the holidays. Uh, go talk to someone if you need to. Um, that's a really bummer note to, to hang out on. Um, so go drink more. No, wait, no, no. You should not use drinking to go as a coping mechanism. Don't do that. That's bad. Uh, if you think you need to be drinking as a coping mechanism, then you definitely need to talk to a therapist. Uh, please do that. Uh, just take care of yourselves. Have a wonderful Christmas. Um, have a great New Year. We'll talk to you before New Year, uh, assuming you, you tune in the day after Christmas. We will be doing this. Um, yes, we will. Yes, we will be doing this. And uh, maybe we'll have a cat to come down and, and show you our cat and see how well he's doing uh, for Christmas. Anyway, Feliz Navidad. Christmas, awesome. Make some doggone good cocktails, and, and we'll be seeing you later.